okay uh, so we will we will continue our uh, from our previous lesson now in our today's uh, session we will be learning at uh, 1.4 uh, lesson that is about energy interaction in the atmosphere so last time you know we have learned about uh, energy principles the basic principles of uh, electromagnetic radiation electromagnetic radiation can be explained by uh, wave theory or particle theory so what does uh, wave theory say wave theory says there is uh, inverse relation between wavelengths and frequency while the particle theory says there is a direct relation or proportion between um, energy of the quantum and frequency so using these two theories we can express the relationship among the energy of the quantum frequency and wavelengths now we have uh, come to know the basic principles of the electromagnetic energy now let's explain and let's discuss about how does the electromagnetic inner radiation interact with atmospheric particles or atmospheric constituents so when electromagnetic radiation passes through the atmosphere it doesn't pass simply through the atmosphere but it forms some kind of interaction these interactions could be uh, like this scattering or absorption so the atmospheric constituents such as molecules clouds water vapors aerosols that are present in the atmosphere could cause some kind of scattering of the electromagnetic radiation or absorption of the electromagnetic radiation so most aerosols most clouds usually absorb the incoming electromagnetic radiation in the atmosphere you know only some portion of the electromagnetic spectrum will you be able to manage to pass through the atmosphere and reaches the surface of the earth and forms interaction with earth objects okay so in remote sensing what we are interested in about is those electromagnetic radiations or those wavelengths ranges in which the atmosphere is transmissive are called atmospheric windows in remote sensing we are interested in knowing those wavelengths ranges which are able to pass through the atmosphere so it is very important to know the impact of different atmospheric constituents in the atmosphere on the electromagnetic radiation for example in different atmospheric conditions there are times when molecules are abundantly present in the atmosphere and there are times when aerosols are abundantly present and there are times where clouds are abundantly present so the different seasons the different time condition of the atmosphere will affect the acquisition of remotely sensed data due to the presence of different atmospheric constituents in the in the atmosphere when there is a clear sky most of the time molecules are present for example in clear skies there are no clouds there are no aerosols but there are molecules when molecules are abundantly present in the atmosphere the kind of interaction that is you know created is usually uh, Uh, Rayleigh scattering you know Rayleigh scattering is a type of scattering created as a result of the presence of 
gas molecules. Gas molecules are very small in diameter. They are very small in size. So when the diameter of the particle is much, much less than the diameter of or the wavelength of the incoming electromagnetic radiation, the type of scattering that is created is called Rayleigh scattering. It is denoted by SR. And when the diameter of the incoming electromagnetic radiation wavelengths is equivalent in size with that of the diameter of the particle in the atmosphere, the scattering is me scattering denoted by SM. And when the diameter of the atmospheric constituent is much, much greater than the wavelengths of the incoming electromagnetic radiation, the type of scattering created is called non-selective scattering. What kind of atmospheric constituents are this with a diameter greater than the incoming electromagnetic radiation? If you ask this question, you will find that most of the time water vapor are atmospheric constituents with much diameter, with greater diameter than atmospheric, I mean, than electromagnetic radiation. So, so at different atmospheric conditions, there are different types of scattering created. So, Rayleigh scattering, me scattering, and non-selective scattering. So these are the different atmospheric constituents responsible for different types of scattering. When smokes and dust aerosols are present, the diameter is equal to the diameter of or the wavelength of the incoming electromagnetic radiation. And when gas molecules are present, most of the time during daytime, when there is clear sky, you will encounter Rayleigh scattering. During Rayleigh scattering, there is a blue scattering. If, if it is, you know, during daytime and when during sunrise and sunset time, the color of the sky becomes red or orange. These are the effects of Rayleigh scattering. And if you see non-selective scattering, it is created as a result of the presence of water vapor. When water vapor is too much in the atmosphere during, you know, cloudy season, during rainy season, the type of scattering is non-selective. It got, you know, this name, non-selective scattering, it is because Water vapor has got a much greater size than the wavelength range, the wavelength diameter. The atmosphere non selectively scatters all of the incoming electromagnetic radiation from the sun. Then the type of color that is created in the sky is white. What will happen if the atmosphere non-selectively scatters all of the incoming electromagnetic radiation? The, the color that you see is all of the electromagnetic spectrum. So the sum total of all of the electromagnetic spectrum or all of the wavelengths region is white. White is not the absence of color, but white is the inclusion of all colors. Okay, because the atmosphere non selectively scatters all of the colors, all of the wavelengths regions. The type of color in the sky that you see is white. White is an indication of the, the presence of water vapor in the atmosphere. Now you can indirectly say there is a water vapor, there is too much water vapor in the atmosphere when you see the sky is white. So this is a very important point. So the, the type of scattering is determined by the type of atmospheric constituent present at a certain time in the atmosphere. So 
these all conditions will affect the amount of the type of electromagnetic radiation that can reach the surface of the earth so in remote sensing knowing this is very important okay you know here is a very important topic related to the specific wavelengths region that can reach the surface of the earth are called atmospheric windows okay in remote sensing we are interested in atmospheric windows okay what are these atmospheric windows atmospheric windows are soft wavelengths regions with wavelengths ranges in which the atmosphere is transmissive are called atmospheric windows now look at this figure this figure shows at the y it is transmission at the x wavelengths region so it shows you which wavelengths region you know has a low transmission and high transmission for example if you go to this wavelength region between 100 micrometer wavelengths up to 0.1 centimeter uh, wavelengths it is blocked by water vapor so the transmission of the atmosphere in this region of the wavelengths is low almost zero the responsible you know uh, factor the responsible or the cause of the atmospheric constraint responsible for the blockage is water vapor while the responsible atmospheric constraint for low transmission of electromagnetic radiation of this region are oxygen in here ozone in here carbon dioxide in here you will find different atmospheric constraints at different wavelengths range being responsible for the cause of scattering or absorption okay for example for uh, for low transmission of this wavelength range below 0.2 are oxygen and ozone so when there are there is too much atmospheric constraint you will have some kind of trouble in your in the availability of electromagnetic uh, radiation for remote sensing so atmospheric windows are very important for remote sensing why it is a wavelength region in which different remote sensing uh, remote sensing sensors operate okay without atmospheric windows there is no remote sensing for example remote sensing operates in this wavelength region in the green wavelength region for example we do have blue green red sensors we do have near infrared sensors so there is no remote sensing sensors which can operate in this in the gray or in uh, in the non-green part of the wavelength stretch so remote sensing only operates in atmospheric windows so it is very important to know which regions are atmospheric window so knowing this also very important in order to design a sensor so if you would like to design a new sensor and if you end up designing a sensor for this region and this is meaningless okay for example our eyes as a sensor can work on this visible range so you can see the atmosphere is transmissive to this wavelength range so we are now able to see this wavelength range there is a sensor which can operate under visible range that is a natural sensor that is our eyes okay there are also sensors which can operate under here under here and the like so 